The Necklace, Part 1 At the end of this lesson, you will be able to, recognize the author, Guy de Maupassant. Describe the main characters of the story. Identify the central theme or idea of the story. Explain the story, The Necklace, Part 1, written by Guy de Maupassant. And, answer questions related to the story and enrich your vocabulary. The Necklace, Part 1, was written by, Guy de Maupassant. Guy de Maupassant was born in Normandy, France in 1850. In the 19th century, he was considered as one of the most indispensable authors of French literature. Being a well-known French novelist, Guy de Maupassant was also regarded as one of the best writers of short stories. Gustave Flaubert, a famous French novelist was his major inspiration. Guy de Maupassant used to spend most of his Sundays with this great French novelist. This acquaintance made him a renowned writer in the near future. Almost 300 short stories, six novels, and three travel books have been published by Guy de Maupassant. Most of his stories were about everyday life of the simple and humble people. He has a fine irony. His style of writing was direct and simple. The main characters of the story are, Madame, Matilda Loisel, Monsieur, Loisel Victor, Madame, Jeanne Forestier. Before we get into the story, here is a short introduction about each character. Matilda, the main character of the story is one of those prettiest young ladies, who expects more of luxury and comforts in life. She is always discontented and unhappy with her life. Mr. Loisel, is a very simple, soft-spoken, and a caring personality. Madame Jeanne Forestier is a rich, friendly, generous woman and a close friend of Mrs. Matilda Loisel. Now, let's get into the story. Once upon a time in the beautiful city of France lived a gorgeous-looking woman named Matilda. She was exquisitely beautiful yet born into a family of clerks, as if it was an error of destiny. Dot though she was simple, she was unhappy, feeling herself born for all the delights and luxuries she had dreamt of. The thought of being unable to lead a luxurious life haunted her day and night. Matilda was doomed because there was no expectations on her family dowry, no means of being known, respected, and married by a rich, or distinguished man. She was married to a plain living, ordinary clerk who worked in the office of the Board of Education. Matilda was not contented as she had to marry a government clerk, who received a stable salary. She loathed the poorness of her house. The shabby walls and battered benches added to the disgust. Thus, she was deeply discontented with her simple life. As she sat down in front of her husband to have dinner, he uncovered the tureen with a lovely breeze. Ah! This is a good pat by. I don't know anything better than that. While Mr. Loisel enjoyed the simple meal, she dreamt of elegant dinners. Her mind always lingered in the air of luxury, and she remained discontented missing the simple and blissful moments of her daily life. She didn't have any expensive gowns, or jewelry, that she always longed for. And she just loved only those things. Matilda had a wealthy acquaintance, a convent schoolmate, whom she didn't want to see. Because when she had visited her once, she cried in despair and disappointment for days, for being unable to lead a prosperous life like hers. One evening, her husband returned with a big envelope in his hand. He said, Therese something for you. She immediately took the printed card from him. She opened the invitation. She read, the Minister of Public Instruction, and Madame Georges Ramponneau, ask the honor of Monsieur, and Madame Loiselle's company, Monday evening, January 18th, at the Minister's residence. She threw the invitation spitefully at the table instead of being pleased, as her husband had hoped. With a troubled eye she stared at him and proclaimed with impatience, what do you think I might want with that? Sadly he said, I thought, my love, you would be pleased about that. You never go out, and it's a perfect chance. She looked at him with an annoyed eye and shouted with impatience, What do you think I've got to wear? 
He didn't think of it, he stumped, why, when we go to the theater, you wear a dress. I find it really cool, he remained silent, shocked and alarmed. At the sight of his wife weeping, he stammered, what is the matter? What is the matter? She had managed her vexation with a violent effort, and replied in a calm voice, wiping her moist cheeks, nothing. Only I have no dress and consequently I cannot go to this affair. Matilda added, give your card to some colleague whose wife is better fitted out than I. Mr. Loiselle was upset, but responded, let's see, Matilda, how much does an acceptable costume cost, something that would also serve for other occasions, and, something very simple, she thought for a few seconds about the amount she should ask for. Finally, in a hesitating voice, she said, I can't tell you exactly, but it seems to me that 400 francs should cover it. Mr. Loiselle turned a little pale. Mr. Loiselle had just saved this amount to purchase a gun, so that he could join some of the hunting parties the next summer, with some friends, who went to shoot the larks, on Sundays. A few minutes later, he responded, very well. I will give you 400 francs. But try to find a decent dress. Now let's witness, what fresh problem disturbs Madame Loiselle now. How is the problem solved? The day approached and Madame Loiselle appeared sad, angry, and nervous again. Her clothes were almost ready. One evening, Mr. Loiselle asked to her, What's your problem? You have acted strangely for two or three days. And she responded, I am vexed not to have a jewel, nothing to adorn myself with. I shall have such a poverty-stricken look. He replied, But you can wear some natural flowers. They look really chic in this season. She was not convinced. No, she replied, there is nothing more humiliating than to have a shabby air in the midst of rich women. Suddenly her husband screamed, how dumb we are. We are stupid. Go find Mrs. Forrest here, your friend, and ask her to lend her jewels to you. She uttered a cry of joy. It is true, she said. I had not thought of that. The next day she took herself to her friend's house, and related her story of distress. Mrs. Forrestier went to her closet, and took out a large jewel case. She opened it, and said, Shoes, my dear. Matilda saw some bracelets, then a collar of pearls, a Venetian cross of gold, and jewels of admirable workmanship. She hesitated, but could neither decide to take them nor leave them. Then she asked, have you nothing more? Mrs. Forrestier replied, why, yes. Look for yourself. I do not know what will please you. Suddenly she discovered, in a black satin box, a superb necklace of diamonds. Her hands trembled as she took it out. She placed it above her throat against her dress, and was ecstatic. Then she asked, in a hesitating voice, full of anxiety, could you lend me this? Mrs. Forrestier happily said, yes, certainly. She fell upon the neck of her friend, and embraced her with passion. At last, the day of the ball arrived. Mrs. Loiselle was a great success. She was the prettiest woman. She was the prettiest of all, elegant, gracious, smiling and full of joy. All the men noticed her, asked her name, and wanted to be presented. She danced with enthusiasm, intoxicated with pleasure, thinking of nothing but all this admiration, this victory so complete and sweet to her heart. She left the ministry hall at four in the morning. Mr. Loiselle threw around her shoulders the modest wraps they had carried, whose poverty clashed with the elegance of the ball costume. She wished to hurry away in order not to be noticed by the other women, who were wrapping themselves in rich furs. Loiselle detained her, wait, said he. I am going to call a cab. But, she would not listen, and descended the steps rapidly. When they were in the street, they found no carriage, and they began to seek for one. Mr. Loiselle tried hailing the coachman, whom they saw at a distance. They walked along towards the river, hopeless and shivering. Finally, they found one of those old carriages, that one sees in Paris after nightfall. It took them as far as their door, 
and they went wearily up to their apartment. It was all over for her, and on his part, he remembered that he would have to be at the office by ten o'clock. She removed the wraps from her shoulders before the glass, for a final view of herself in her glory. Suddenly she uttered a cry. To her utter dismay the necklace was missing. Before concluding, let's check on some important questions and answers. Conclusion The diamond necklace is missing. What will Mr. and Mrs. Loiselle do now? How will they return it to Mrs. Forrest here? To be continued in, The Necklace, Part 2. Through this short story, The Necklace, we learn that, appreciating what one has is more important than being unhappy about what's not there. Summary The story, The Necklace was written by the famous French writer, Guy de Maupassant. The main character of this fictional story, Mrs. Loiselle lived with her husband who was a clerk. She felt irritated, disappointed and sad for being unable to lead a luxurious life. One day, her husband got a chance to attend a party, organized by, the Ministry of Public Instruction. In order to appear well dressed in the party, Matilda bought a new dress, and borrowed a diamond necklace, from her friend. Unfortunately, she lost the necklace, and entered into a state of grief, due to her greedy desire.